that was a really long gospel reading. <sighs> this past week, I took the advice of some of my local Austinite friends, and I left town for spring break <laughs> to avoid the South by Southwest crowds. And I joined the thousands of Austinites and headed to a little place on the coast, affectionately known as Port A. Ha ha, the joke was on me because everybody was in Port A. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. As we, my family and I were driving to Port A, I couldn't help but think back to where we were three years ago. Three years ago, like most of the country, I was busy preparing and stockpiling snacks. Probably was a little worried about the toilet paper that I was worried we would run out of. And I prepared myself for a brief lockdown, an extended spring break, if you will, and being from Louisiana, I love a good hurricane, so this kind of felt like a bit of a hurricane party, the beginning of the pandemic. But what we know now is that that was just the beginning. And we ended up with a global pandemic, and thank you, God, we're at the end of this pandemic. And it's changed our world. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We didn't sing it, but you know the song. The hymn, Amazing Grace, is one of the most popular and well-known hymns that we sing. Some of you may not know that Amazing Grace was written in the 1700s by an Englishman named John Newton. And John Newton wrote Amazing Grace as a response to an encounter that he had with God. And this encounter changed his life. It changed his life because it was a testimony to his faith, the saving grace of God. Because you see, John Newton had a story. John Newton, John Newton's mother died when he was a young man, a young child. And following her death, he had to join his father on a merchant marine ship. And so as you can imagine, his childhood was less than idyllic. And as he grew into adulthood, Newton struggled to maintain relationships. He tried to desert his crew of a ship at one point, and he was kicked off a ship, and he was captured by slave traders off the coast of West Africa for leaving the army. And he eventually escaped captivity only to eventually become a slave trader himself. John Newton, by all accounts, was probably not someone that we would look up to. But you see, there was a storm. John Newton experienced a storm on the sea and this storm threatened to drown him and his entire crew. And facing his own death, Newton cried out to God. And God answered. Because John Newton encountered the divine. And his life changed. Newton had a conversion experience. 
But this conversion experience didn't happen overnight. In fact, he continued to work into the, in the slave trade. And it, wasn't thir- it was 34 years later, after he had retired from the slave trade, that his heart really changed. He published a pamphlet entitled Thoughts Upon the Slave Trade in which he described the horrific conditions of the slave ships during the Middle Passage. He apologized for a confession he said came too late. And he wrote in his journal, it will always be a subject of humiliating reflection to me that I was once an active instrument in a business at which my heart now shudders. The lengthy story of Jesus giving sight to a man born blind in John's gospel is not just a miracle story. The healing of the man born blind isn't really the point. It's not really about Jesus restoring vision. It's a story of relationship. It's a story of redemption. And it's about our identity when we tell the truth about who we were and who we have become through Christ. It's about an encounter with God. And you and I, we have these encounters all the time with God, right? Sometimes they aren't a real big deal. Sometimes I like to call them God winks. The little signs, a text from a friend at just the right moment. Perhaps the fields of gold flowers on a Texas highway with little pockets of blue bonnets spread amongst them. And then there are the encounters we have with God that change everything. Encounters of such magnitude that perhaps the exact moment of encounter fades from your memory, but all you know is that once you saw the world this way, and now you see it another way. You might not even be able to explain how it happened, but you were changed. You encountered grace. Encountering Jesus is often messy. It's often filled with holy spit and mud. And it's when our heart vision is blurred by the mud in our eyes and the emotions that come with that, that we encounter the holy. And this isn't just for us. We also doubt the parts in ourselves that we don't see as holy. And what about those who who we fail to believe can change? The ones who have disappointed us so many times, we wonder if it's even worth trying. What about those whom you have ignored because you couldn't see past their disability? What about those who you have disassociated with because their political views or morality don't look like your own? And what if all of those questions are questions that you ask of yourself? What if that person is you? Today we read Psalm 23, and it's really the missing piece of the gospel message today. Because in Psalm 23, we are reminded of who Jesus is and who we are to Jesus. Jesus is the shepherd. We are his sheep. He is both our protector and our comforter. 
and make no bones about it, he pursues us with goodness and loving kindness. We don't have to search very far to find him. He's here at this table, God's table. And in a few moments, when we come to the table, I invite you to bring with you your doubts, your fears, your pain, and your sorrow. And in return, you will receive amazing grace. For I was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Amen.